So I'm a mathematician, a couple of ground rules. Yes, this will be on the test, all right? <laughs> all right, and, I'll, and I will give you a few minutes to take some notes so you can go ahead and get really, do really well on the quiz at the end of today. Ready? All right. Well, I am a mathematician, so humor's not my strong point, but I do have a couple of jokes. You want to hear jokes? <laughs> you want to hear one about math or about mathematicians? All right. About math? All right. Why is six afraid of seven? Seven, eight, nine. Yeah, that's a classic. <laughs> it's a very good one. Mathematician? All right. What's the difference between an introverted mathematician and an extroverted mathematician? The extrovert will look at your shoes. <laughs> All right. So today what, we're, what, I'm, what I'm really excited to talk about is this project that started from really, I think, humble beginnings and grew into something that really is massive. If you're not familiar with the term MOOC, um, it stands for Massive Open Online Course. Um, New York Times declared 2013 the year of the MOOC, and it, and it has had some uh, transformative um, impacts on education, not, not what was predicted necessarily, but it has had an influence. Um, I'm not going to talk a lot about those influences. I'm going to talk about this one particular project and, and why I'm passionate about it um, and, and the impact that it's had on people. People like uh, groups like this. Um, a few years ago, I was a director of an institute, and the, the goal of the institute was to help develop learning materials um, to help students learn whatever the faculty wanted them to learn. And we were uh, developing things that could go online. It was uh, very popular at the time. And it was, uh, it was, the model was exceptional in the sense that rather than just training faculty how to make materials, what we did is we put teams of students together with faculty so that the, the techie students could help the the faculty who wanted, knew what they wanted to see happen on the screen but couldn't always do it themselves. And it worked really well. And we were building a, a variety of things. And Maggie McHugh, who was the director of our student support services, came to me one day and she said, I've, I've got some students that are struggling with math. It was her job to help them through those struggles and, it, and uh, she was very good at it. But she could really only spend a limited amount of time with the students. So what she wanted was to somehow get um, some of those common concepts captured, um, the descriptions of those concepts captured in a way that she could then give to the students and they can use them anytime, anywhere. So what we ended up developing, and, and I'll get back to this group of great looking students in a moment. Um, there's 38 of them, by the way. I know numbers are important, so you were probably wondering how many were there, right? 38. Um, the, uh, the, the model we came up with for this content um, evolved over time, but this is, this is what we kind of settled down on. This is called a learning object. And go ahead, and I'll give you a minute to figure out the answer to that math question. How much pure acid and 30% acid solution should be mixed together to obtain 28 quarts of 40% acid solution? It's the sort of thing that you probably saw in high school. You probably were reminded of it in uh, chemistry and, and a few other classes if you went on to college. But it's the sort of thing that if you hadn't kept up on it, if you hadn't had your skills honed and kept them honed over time, it's something that you could slip a little bit on. And, and, and it was questions like this that students were coming to Maggie and asking about. So well, we developed these uh, learning objects. The front page just states the problem. Um, there's some room there so it inspires you to write. The answer I'm not going to click on right away because I know a lot of you are working on this problem right now. But um, the chalk talk is one of the most popular things. What this is is uh, a voiceover um, where the instructor or an expert is writing out the solution to the problem and talking the student through the concept behind the problem. And uh, they can fast forward, rewind. It really is, in the end, like a YouTube video. And today's, I was going to say youth, but just about everybody today is familiar with YouTube and how to use it and how to use it to their strengths. Um, the More Info tab gives you kind of textbook information around that sort of a problem, and then Self Check gives you a couple more to try. Um, so, does everybody have the answer to the problem? All right, Answer tab four quarts of pure acid, 24 quarts of uh, this 30% acid solution. Everybody get it? Good job. Absolutely everybody raised their hand. That was great. Um, 
So we developed a, a library of those sorts of things. And these were students that were in college but struggling with their math class. And one of our math education faculty members came to us and said, you know, um, what you're doing for Maggie is great. It's helping the, her students. But wouldn't it be better if we could get to the students before they arrived on campus so that they never struggled with the math to begin with? And one of the things that those of us in higher ed know but um, many parents and, and the community don't necessarily always understand is that being admitted into college doesn't automatically give you access to every course the, the university um, offers. And in fact, that first math class, um, if you don't come in with a certain skill set, that first math class that you're required to take might not count towards graduation. We call it developmental or remedial. And that's a, a good thing and a bad thing. I mean, it's a good thing in the sense that if you don't have those skills, we have a course that'll help you get those skills so that you can succeed. The bad thing is it's not part of what you need to graduate, so it slows you down. I mean, if, you're, if you're slowing down, you know, time is money. So it may take you longer to graduate. You may have to um, commit more of your life to higher education before you go out and get that job, and it can cost money. So we have this library of learning objects that we're covering topics that we knew students were struggling with, that were built around teams of students of, some of them were future math educators or future science educators, um, as the students working with faculty to build these. And uh, Jennifer Koziak said, you know, I wonder if there's a course in there, not just a series of discrete problems, but an actual course. And so she proposed building one, and um, we did that. And um, it ended up being a six-week course that was taught online in the summer. To get in, you had to be a student that was bound for the campus, and you had to have placed in developmental math. All right, the course itself was free, and then at the end of the course, you would come to campus one week early and get a little more help, a little more one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, help as well as uh, get introduced to the campus. Where is the tutor lab? What is the library? Where, uh, how do you talk to faculty? Those sorts of things that uh, students don't always know when they show up. And what we did for those students then is, uh, for six weeks they studied online, one week they came to campus, and then we had them sit for that same exam that originally placed them into developmental to see what the change is in their college readiness in terms of mathematics. This graph has 38 dots on it. It's the, those students you saw a few minutes ago. This is their pretest score. This is the score that um, put them into remedial. In uh, many places, these tests have multiple dimensions to them, and I don't want to spend too much time on the dimensions, but basically this score on this axis is your basic math skills. Can you add fractions, that sort of thing? And their score up here is algebra basic algebra. And if you do a good score on your basic and a good score on your algebra, then you're college ready and you get into college credit bearing math classes. If you're struggling with one or the other, or God forbid both, then you're in developmental and you need to take a course th before you uh, get into the college credit bearing math course. So all of these students are down in this area where they don't want to be, right? They want to be ready. And at the end of that course, we measured them again, and so everybody pick a dot. You know, you want to end up up here if you're one of these students, right? High on algebra, high on basic. Ready? Everybody got one? All right, come on, come on, come on. Is yours one? <laughs> All right. So over the course of the summer, we actually only measured it in two points, but this made it, makes it look like we measured them every day, but we didn't. We measured them at the end, and boom, they're up here. And you know, the one up there, phenomenal. Um, but all of these up in here, except this one, had made it across that boundary. So all of the students in this course um, were now able to enter into college credit-bearing math class. And we tracked, their, we tracked their scores in that class, all but one, 37 out of 38 made it. I'll talk a little bit more about how they did in their first year, um, but it was, uh, it was comparable to students who hadn't placed into developmental to begin with, which again, if you're interested in at-risk factors, that's kind of the, the, the gold, right? We took somebody who was at risk, 
and their statistics now don't show them at risk at all. They're, they're on track, which is fabulous. So um, what I'm gonna show you here is kind of the layout of the course. That little learning object that we looked at before with the mixing problems that had the YouTube video and the other things in it, that's a learning object. There's two or three different uh, styles of those. Some of them have more video, some have uh, embedded PowerPoint. Um, but all of these green dots in here represent, each one of these represents one of those uh, learning objects. All right. And uh, the red dots down here at the bottom are things like the course syllabus and uh, how to do your homework. Um, there is a homework set at uh, each level, and that's what the orange uh, kind of yellow dot is. And then that more burnt orange is the gateway quiz. If you get through a quiz, then you make it to the next level. So the course starts out at the bottom level and works its way up. All right. So down here in the bottom is where you'd see fractions, ratios, percents. As you get up towards the top, you're looking at factoring degree three polynomials, right? Everybody loves that. I saw everybody smile. Ah, yes. So let's go through them one by one, shall we? <laughs> no, we won't do that. Over here, um, just to let you know, is, um, there, is, it, there was a homework room and a, a place where you could come and get tutoring. It's online, but it's a room, and you can Skype in, essentially, and get either one-on-one -on -one help or small group help. The other dot over here, and I can't remember which is which, is the, uh, a live lecture video. So at the beginning of each unit, a uh, faculty member would, we would capture them talking you through pretty much all of this concept in mathematics. So this thing is set up with 10 modules from bottom to top, and um, each one has a gateway quiz to get to the next. And what we've done, what we've been able to do with the technology, with the advances in technology, is not only offer this to a lot of people, but be able to study how people are using this. And this helps us refine the course itself. So I'm gonna show you one uh, cool to watch video and then I'll show you what, I'll tell you what it means. All right, let's see how this goes. So this takes a moment, but what this is looking at is the order in which a student navigated through that set of learning objects that we had looked at. Um, you can see it as he progressed, he moved um, primarily from left to right, but occasionally would jump back to the left and sometimes jump down. And so you've been in a math class before, you know every once in a while you get stuck on a problem. You tend to go back, you know you've heard something before, you know you've seen it, you'd go back and start looking for it. What we can do with technology like this is see where um, students are getting hung up, and they don't have to tell us where they're getting hung up, we can physically see it and we can see where they're going back and looking on their own for more help. And it's at those points where we might refine the course then, put in a little extra information, or put in a suggestion on where to find the help that you might need. We, um, we opened it up to the world thanks to a Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation grant. We moved the six-week portion of this course, and we invited the entire world in. So those first 38 and those wonderful scores that we saw improving gave us the evidence we needed to get a grant funded. And we bumped up the course a little bit, put in a lot more tutoring hours, put in a lot more uh, interaction um, bases, and we opened it up to the world. And this is uh, very washed out, but what that says is 43 countries and all 50 states um, were represented in that first uh, offering of the worldwide MOOC. There was 2,000 plus um, students in it, and I say students like this because I don't know what you think of when I say the word students. The, uh, the age range on these students were from uh, 10 years old up to 85 years young. All right. And since we've had, I, I taught a learning and retirement course using this and one woman said, yeah, I'm not qualified. And I said, no, you're qualified. 10 to 85, everybody fits. She says, I'm 90. So I've got to update the graph. But what the height of these bars is telling you um, is the, the frequency that that age showed up in the group. So it's not surprising. The target audience we were looking at are those that are college bound, out of high school, or maybe in college and struggling. So most of them were that. But there are a large number of individuals that showed up that were outside of that range. And one of the things we did was ask them why. 
why are you interested in taking this course? I love math. I'm a mathematician, so I wanted the answer to be the same, right? I love math. I want to be a mathematician. And we did actually get that. We got some of that. Um, but what we got from a, a number of them, you know, and I think the 10-year-old said something like that. I love math. I'm, I'm not challenged at school. I want to see if this is, you know, this is beyond me. I want to try and get there. Many were wanting to know it for their educational purposes. They saw a course coming that needed this. Um, and maybe their teachers were even requiring it. But there was a significant group in here, and this is something we learned quite a bit about, that said, you know, I've got some college credits. I'm not in college now. I think I want to go back, but I'm not sure if I've got it. Right? And when you dig into that, what do you mean? They said, well, for one thing, I know I would need to do a math class in college. I don't know if I, can, if I still have it on the math. And what this gives them is a free, so low-risk way of helping them self-assess, but it also gives them a way to improve their math skills so that they assess at the right point. It gives them that access. And to provide um, the students that were, in, uh, uh, that were undergraduates at the university who were planning to be math teachers, to allow them to work with 2,000 people from around the globe, people living in every time zone in every state, really gave them an experience that it would have been difficult to replicate. It would have been expensive to try and make it happen. We just opened it up and it happened for free. Um, we've been um, looking at the, the reasons why and kind of boiling them down to a few categories. And um, a good number of them did say general interest. It was, yeah, I've always liked math. I like Sudoku. I think I'll try this, right? It's low risk. What, what the heck? Let's try it. Um, but a, a big chunk were trying to further their education. There was a group that were required to take it, and that was interesting. So the high school teachers, some high school teachers had already figured out that this was, this was on the radar, and they started signing up their class. But we also saw a big chunk of educators that weren't in the traditional sense teachers. They, were, they are teachers, but they're homeschooling parents. They are, we saw some grandparents that said, I get the, I get the grandkids on the weekends and they want me to help them with their algebra, and I don't know, I don't remember it anymore. I'm hoping this will help. Um, there was a bus, school bus driver. He says, I'm on a rural route, and sometimes I'm on the bus with these kids for 20 minutes, and they'll yell up, hey, Mr. Smith, can you tell me how to, what's the square root of, you know, this, that, or the other? And he says, it bugs me that I, can, I don't know the answer, so I'm looking for help. And what we're seeing now is more and more schools are look, work, looking to work this into their curriculum intentionally. They are putting the same content in place for those students who have said they're college bound and want to make sure that they're on track. It turns out there's ways to <clears throat> measure quality of, of courses that are like this. There's a Quality Matters is an external review team. They will come into your course for a fee, but they'll come into your course and analyze it and look for some key indicators of success. And, and we were... Um, the, this MOOC received the highest score in the year 2013 of all of those. And as a result, we won the uh, 2013 Desire to Excel Award, which is Desire to Learn, the, uh, the learning management system. Um, this course pushed them on a new path. They now have a MOOC environment because this one exists. So we received uh, the award for that. But we're still using this to help those students that are bound for particular campuses. That course that has the MOOC as the six weeks and that one year mini uh, experience has grown. It's grown not only on this campus but across the state, um, and this is in Wisconsin. Milwaukee's a big player in this. They actually have many more students and many more students get involved in this. Um, the lacrosse group broke from one, one uh, section to two sections, and we're still seeing the high percentage success rates on those that complete the course, very high. And for those administrators in the room or parents in the room, these are, you know, I don't, I'm not sure the students care, but <laughs> it does um, help with some of the key indicators that um, we know lead to success in college. And the retention data is something in particular we were keeping an eye on. And it turns out that students who um, complete this course, do end up um, being sophomores um, at, a, at a percentage that's 
higher than those that did not complete the course, which again means they're on their path to success and we're proud that this helped put them on it. Um, I'll leave you with a few words that the students had to say about this, but uh, I think that's my time. Thank you very much.